Hey guys, I'm here at Origins Game Fair 2019. I'm here with Ty Vance by with Highborn Games with the game Dawn Shade. And we're gonna be talking about this uh, interesting little game here. It's got some really, really nice artwork before I even get into any of what's going on here. It just looks beautiful. So Ty, go ahead and take it off and let me know a little bit more about Dawn Shade. We're big fans of JRPG style games. And if you're familiar with JRPGs, it stands for Japanese Role Playing Game. And so these games were made popular by old video game franchises like Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger. And so we've tried to take the best of those type of games and implement it on the tabletop. So in Dawn Shade, you're playing the role of one of these Patarukan. The Patarukan are a small and insignificant race in the world of Dawn Shade. And they've been tasked by the high elders of their village to protect Kimber, a Patarukan you've known since you were a youngling and you're protecting her on this quest to restore balance to the world of Dawnshade. And she's involved in this prophecy called the Watcher's Prophecy, which is shrouded in mystery. You don't know much about it. And you're kind of learning as you go. So the objective of the game is to defeat one of the major threats facing Dawnshade. And the way that this works is you're creating a quest deck that is randomized with different events, different journey tiles, outpost tiles, and you'll even have some battles in here. And at the very bottom of the deck is your major threat. And so you're working your way through that deck. Now is the threat like a boss? Is that kind of what it is? Yeah, it's kind of like a final boss battle. And every time you move on your quest deck, so you're revealing new quest tiles and placing them down and you're lining up these paths. So there's kind of a puzzle to the way that you're procedurally generating your overworld. And every time you move on this quest mat, you're ticking up this threat dial. So this threat dial determines the difficulty of the game. In a normal game, you have 16 moves until that final encounter is coming to you if you don't already get to it. So it's kind of a race against the clock. And this actually shows you your threat, your training, and your XP right here. And you actually just turn it to symbolize the very cool, I like that. Oh, yeah, wow. right, very so cool. every new encounter that you have, you'll read from kind of a choose your own adventure style narrative that presents br branching paths. And each of those paths have, have a positive and negative outcome associated with it. So there's endless variety in both the quest you encounter and then every time you go through a quest, it's gonna be something different because depending on how well you do in that challenge, you could have something good happen or something bad happen. And then how well you do in those challenges determines how much experience you get and how much currency you get in the game. So our currency in the game is called Tawny. So this is, you're gonna really want this stuff because this is how you buy the cool items in the game. And as you level up your character, you're, you're increasing the stats that control different aspects of your character. Mainly like, for instance, if I move my attack up, then that means I can roll more attack dice. If I roll my devotion up, that means I can roll more Vaki dice. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Vaki. Vaki is the elemental essence of the world. That so all this stuff is like st straight up storyline, like, like fed into it, right? Like and that's what I'm getting from you right now yeah, is each sure. of these things has tons of deep storyline. Okay, so this is like the instantly I'm like, wow, there's so much stuff going on. So you've actually really planned out all the story elements in all of this game. Then yeah, I mean it's it's you know it's like a JRPG. It's a sweeping epic adventure that you're having with your your buddies, and so the Vaki is. Let me just kind of point you to this Vaki map. This is where you can collect your pool of, of Vaki that's used to charge your abilities. So each character has a number of abilities that you can learn by upgrading your guild hall back at your village. And so like, for instance, Ash has one called Gleaming Shield. If he wants to perform this ability, he needs one sun and two water Vaki. So he'll have to roll Vaki dice in order to generate that during battle. And that's dependent on his devotion stats. So your stats really matter in the game. Okay. So there is a worker placement type element to it where you're taking uh, these Cogbot drudges who are your little worker bees and you're sending them out to these resource nodes to collect resources and it takes a certain amount of drudges to get a certain amount of resources. So like to get wood, I need two Cogbot drudges to get five wood. So, you know, and so on and so forth. On each turn, I can move one of these drudges one, one place. So on one turn I could collect and then on the next turn I could take them back, 
to my starting village and collect those resources and use that to upgrade my village huts. So for instance, if I were to upgrade the guild hall, then I'd upgrade it from tier one to tier two. Now I can access my tier two level skills. Or if I wanted to upgrade my mercantile from tier one to tier two, now I can access my tier two items. So with the game, it has, while you were talking about choosing your own adventure, and that has to do with this over here, right? How does that exactly work? That's the one thing I'm really the most curious about, because I understand the rest of it now, but you're talking about choosing your own adventure, because I like games like Arabian Nights, uh, Near and Far, that kind of stuff. Uh, how does this function? So every time you encounter a new event or a battle, then it presents you, you'll, you'll go and read from a logbook. And we've consciously kept the narrative short, but deep and really rich. And so you'll never, reading, you'll never be reading for more than a minute at a time, but it presents you with this challenge that has branching paths. And depending on which path you choose, you go down that path and every path has a positive and negative outcome that may give you positive conditions when you go into battle or negative conditions. It may take Tawny away from you or give you Tawny. Um, there's a lot of different things that happen that always keep you on your toes, toes and surprise you. So if you encounter a battle, then Battle, the battle kind of explodes onto the battle map. And let me just kind of briefly talk you, uh, to you about what happens in a battle. It's uh, kind of a tactical turn-based battle, Final Fantasy-esque, where you have an initiative stack that gets randomly shuffled at the beginning of the, of the match. And then that determines your turn order. And so the gray chips represent your foes and the green chips represent your allies. So in this battle scenario, number two, our Timberclaw Aeronaut would go first. And he's got his, you know, his hit points and his shields below here, below here. And then he would take his turn, roll his dice. They all have unique stats on the back of their chips that show you how many attack dice they roll, how many defense dice they roll. They also have unique special abilities and ultimate abilities. So you have four rounds that you can use and there are different winning or losing conditions. You can force a retreat, you can do, defeat them completely, they can force a retreat on you if they have more hit points than you, or they can defeat you completely. On round two, they have that's when their ultimate ability goes off, so you have to kind of watch out for that because you know that's coming. And then you have one more round after that to complete the battle. Depending on which, which victory conditions or loss conditions you have, that determines how much experience you get. Um, if you totally knocked them out, then you, you get an extra item, so that's kind of a bonus. And then you use that to upgrade your character the next time you go to your guild hall and you continue on your quest until you work your way toward that final encounter and hopefully you're ready by then to face him. So, now an inter interesting thing, I don't know if he said it or not, how many players is this game? Okay, so it's solo through five players and it plays at about an hour for a solo game and a half hour per player for a two to five player game. So maybe an hour and a half for two players, is that what you're saying? And then an hour, a half an hour? Uh, so it would be an hour for two players. Okay. So the solo game and the two player game are about the same. Yeah. And uh, age group, it's for 12 and up. And it's a, it's a family friendly game, but it's got some meat to it as well. I think uh, if you enjoy co-op games, and especially if you like JRPGs, there's really a lot to love about Don Shade. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time and showing us your game. It looks great. The visuals look great. And there's also a lot that is presented in the game. I mean, we've got worker placement, tactics, tile placement, choose your own adventure. So I want to see how it all combines. Now, when is this going to be released and how are they going to be able to get their hands on it? Where can they go now in order to get a little bit more information? So if you're interested, I would encourage you to go to our website at donshadegame.com and sign up for our launch updates. We're doing monthly launch updates between now and our Kickstarter. We're targeting October. Uh, we're not going to release the game until it's ready. And so, it's a good choice. <laughs> if it's not in October, it'll be in the spring. So follow us, and, uh, and we're working really hard to get it done as soon as we can. So uh, it would be at uh, highborngames.com? Dawnshadegame.com. Dawnshadegame.com. Yep. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, man. And we look forward to seeing the game and hopefully you get a chance to review this as the Kickstarter comes out and show everybody else how to play a full uh, version of the game or whatnot. We'll see, we'll see where we go from there. But thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie here at Origins Game Fair 2019. And here we are at the Jap Anime's booth with Therese. Hello, Therese. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? 
I'm doing well. It's been a fun show so far. Awesome. That's great to hear. I see a lot of people at the booth, a lot of activity going on. What are you most excited to share with us at Origins this year? We have several new releases that we're excited to show people. Um, Love Battle High School, Starlight Stage, but we're really excited about Kamigami Battles, which is our first in-house developed game. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about it. Like, what's the, the quick spiel? Yeah, so we specialize in deck building card games, so this sort of fits that trend. And in this game, you are playing a god of ancient mythology, and you are going to take your devoted disciples, and you're going to use them to recruit new warriors that are more powerful so that you can defeat the other gods and reign supreme over the domain of the world. Awesome. So I see you, you have a lot of gods from different mythologies here and Thor and a lot of uh, celestial elements as well. I see Cancer, Gemini, Libra. Cool. What, uh, do you know anything about like why you chose this theme and, and or, you know, a little bit about the theme? So I'm not entirely sure why um, the warriors were chosen to be like the zodiac signs, aside from the fact that the gods in this base game are the Greek and uh, Norse mythology gods. Um, so I imagine that they chose that because of the Greek theme. Yeah. Um, in our other expansion, so we have one for River of Souls that is Babylonian and Egyptian. And so all the warriors in that are themed after like the Sphinx and, you know, uh, Nefertiti. So very like Egyptian style warriors. Awesome. Cool to hear. Well, the artwork is super cool as always from Gap Anime Thank Games. <laughs> Uh, anything else you want to share about the game, like how many players, how long it is? Sure, so it's for two to six players. There's two different types of gameplay. You can either do a free-for-all where it's like Battle Royale, the last person standing is the winner, or you can do a team play, so like I would be the supporting god and you would be the main god. As long as you're alive, we're still in the game. Um, and that can be two on two, it can be three on three, it can be two versus two versus two, it's however you want to play it. So if people, uh, let's say people know you a little bit, what games is this kind of similar to that you guys have done before? Um, it's kind of like Tanto or Heart of Crown. I would say it's probably more similar to Heart of Crown, except that you're fighting each other instead of trying to get your princess on the throne. Um, but the market works the same and the starting hand is the same. Well, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Just a little bit. Uh, one random question, maybe. <laughs> what uh, do you like about board games and what makes you so excited to work in for Jap anime games? Yeah. So I really like um, problem solving. It's like my big thing, like what I try to do at work and stuff. And I feel like when you play games, that is what you're doing is you're trying to like find the most efficient way to solve a problem but also you get that social aspect that doesn't happen a lot when you play video games so i really enjoy making memories with my friends by being like oh wasn't it so fun when we played that game and that thing happened that was so silly uh, i love it awesome well thank you so much Cherise. it thank was really you. great to meet you and talk to you yeah i appreciate it thank you so much and uh so that's it for our first interview here with Jap anime games at origins i look forward to See you guys next time. Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of our Origins Game Fair interview with Jap Anime Games. We have Sharice here. Hello again. Hi. <laughs> and uh, what game are you going to share with us this time? This is our newest base game for the Heart of Crown deck building card game. Um, it just released a couple months ago. Um, it's a completely standalone base game for the series. The full name is Heart of Crown Fairy Garden? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so you don't need, this isn't an expansion, you can actually just get this game. Yep, absolutely. Awesome, so tell me a little bit about it, like how many players and what, what the goal is. Yeah, so in this game, uh, it's a deck building card game, and the goal of the game is, unlike other deck builders, you're not trying to get the most victory points, it's actually a race. So there's two phases to the game. The first phase is you're going to build up your kingdom, get your resources, kind of typical deck builder. And then in the second phase, you're going to back a princess once you have a kingdom. So then you take that princess and you get to use her unique ability for the rest of the game. Once you have a princess, you can start putting the cards that have succession points on them into your kingdom. And then whoever gets 20 succession points first is the winner. The game plays two to four players. It takes about an hour to play. Oh, awesome. So I see you're trying to get one of the princesses, just one, right? And make them the most powerful yeah. and uh, conquer everyone else. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, you want to put them on the, th on the, the throne. throne. So I've had people explain it as it's sort of like Game of Thrones, but with like Moe girls. 
Awesome. Well, as always, the art is beautiful in this game as well. Do you have a favorite princess? Um, I like Bergamot because she plays a little bit like blue and magic. Um, oh. You get to keep shuffling through your deck and stuff, so I'm, I'm into that. Yeah, I know someone who's into that too, our unfiltered <laughs> gamer, Michael Wright. <laughs> mm, we, we flock together. Awesome. So if people want to get this game, where can they get it? Is it out yet? Yeah, so this one's out. We have two expansions that are with this series that are smaller. They're not out yet, but we do have them available here at Origins. Um, it's $50. They can purchase it on our website or preferably at their local retailer. Awesome. So what is the website or where they could find one of the retailers? Um, www.japanimegames.com is our website and then we have retailers all over the country and um, they can always special order it. Oh, yeah. good to know. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sharice, for sharing about this game. Uh, is there anything else you want to share about Japanime games? Anything? You want to say a certain social media channel you guys want people to follow? Mm. Um, I mean, we, we have a bunch of Facebook groups. If you guys want to talk with other fans of deck building games and anime, you can come and join our Facebook groups. Um, we try to post regularly so that people can talk about the things that they love. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. It's great to meet you great here. To meet you. And uh, this is Callie from Unfiltered Gamer at Origins Game Fair. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello everyone! I'm Callie Wright from Unfiltered Gamer and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair 2019 in Columbus, Ohio. Today I'm here at the Catalyst Game Labs with Jason. Hello Jason! Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How is it going here at Origins? Really good. Busier than I expected and just really exciting. Awesome. Well, I heard you guys have something you want to share with everyone here. So what do we have here today? We have the Shadowrun Sprawl Ops board game. Uh, Shadowrun, of course, is a universe that's been around for like 30 years. Um, but what I've said a lot is no matter how you play games, we want you to play Shadowrun. So we have role-playing games, deck-building games, dice games, and now we have a full-on board game, kind of combination worker placement with pressure luck dice game. Uh, in classic Shadowrun fashion, you're trying to build a team of people who do nefarious deeds and the things that no one else wants to do bulk them up, get them magic, get them augmentations, and get them to make one big score against the evil corporations of the world. Awesome. So it seems like it's, it's this whole big world, and you're just using different platforms to get different people engaged in the same world. Exactly. It's, it's got a great, you know, fantasy cross with cyberpunk noir feel, and so it's so much fun to play, and we want people to be able to enjoy it. Awesome. So tell us more about the board game specifically, because that's what we're really interested in. How many players? How long does it take? What do you get with it? Uh, so it is a four-player game at base. You can expand it to five or six players. It takes around an hour or so. Uh, so you get everything you see here, or don't see here, I don't know the camera. <laughs> um, but you get a, a whole bunch of dice, because one thing Shadowrun is about is a lot of six-sided dice. Uh, you get all the car player cards and standees for the four teams in the base game. And then there's Shadow Runners. Like here we've got uh, Sledge, one of the Street Samurai characters. And they all fill different roles. You've got your hackers, your mages, your faces, the kind of talking charisma guys. And then all the things they'll need to succeed in a run, from new weapons to new magic spells to cyberware, new re leg replacements, all that stuff and even better runners. If you need to upgrade your team to get someone in there, then you can hire new runners. So it's got all, oh, and of course, cash, because everything takes money to get, and you're trying to earn a lot of cash at the end. Awesome. So, <laughs> got a little background right, so noise right there. Near the microphone for the announcements. <laughs> yeah. So if people want to know uh, where to get the Shadow Run, Shadow Ops, where should they go? Uh, so it's not in stores yet, but the, this is the first part of the full print run that's going to go, be going out to retail. You can go to our store at CatalystGameLabs.com and then it'll be hitting retail before too long and you'll have a chance to pick it up. Awesome. And are you guys have anything else you want to share coming up? Are you going to be at any other cons coming up? Uh, we'll definitely be at Gen Con because the role playing game will have its full new edition there. And uh, don't know how many, well, PAX West will be at. And so we got lots of Shadowrun things coming up. It's the anniversary year of both Shadowrun and Battletech. So we're doing all sorts of celebratory things for this year.
Awesome. Well, congratulations. And thank you so much, Jason. It was great to meet yeah, you and talk to you. Thanks for coming by. And uh, that's it for our interview here today. Uh, thank you guys. And as always, look forward to seeing you guys next time.